Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I kind of want to continue where we left off, uh, having just created our loading screen. Um, and I want to kind of talk about a little bit of the design choices that we need to make before we move forward. Um, this is going to include kind of generally cleaning up the code. Uh, it's always good after you've kind of made some progress to do some code hardening. And what that means is just like really dig in and look at your logic, what you have. Not necessarily everything, but kind of just go through a little bit of the code and see where you may have made small mistakes or where the logic could be uh, looking a little bit prettier. Um, just so it's uh, easier to read for not only you, but even others who will possibly be using your code down the road. Now, so far, we've just kind of been plugging things in, and it, it's made me feel a little uneasy about where we've uh, kind of gotten to without handling a few uh, cases where uh, I realize we haven't been handling state disposing or screen disposing yet, and we need to start looking into the actual uh, what is called singleton design pattern. And I'm going to introduce that to you with our um, with our screens and it'll involve the base application and uh, what it's not going to be the go-to actual description of a singleton design um, but we're going to be keeping single instances of each screen throughout the life of our game so what that means is we're only going to be making one of these objects and never making them again if we need them again we'll just uh, ask the application to give us that context of this object that we created before. Um, so all of our states will pretty much be initialized as right off the bat. Um, and so we have to do a little bit of code migration into the show methods uh, because what we've been working with isn't going to be very flexible down the road if we have a lot of screens. And I know that might sound like I've set you guys up for failure, but that's just because we've been, I've been trying to introduce a lot of topics that you can use in various places. Um, so I don't, I don't want you guys to feel like you've necessarily been drawn uh, kind of off to this other path, but this code cleanup is going to go very fast. So just bear with me and uh, I'll, I'll speak about it along the way. So first things first, um, we need to be able to dispose of these states or these screens, so to speak, uh, when our game closes. At the moment, the dispose method is never called. Uh, screens never call their dispose method automatically. And so we want to get them going in here. Uh, at the moment, we do dispose of the current screen that's going. However, um, we're just going to be taking that out and replacing it with an actually hard-coded, like, dispose of these screens, please, once we're done. So um, to kind of get started with that, we're going to be making some public objects. So we got our loading screen. That's just going to be loading screen, pretty easy naming conventions. Uh, we have our splash screen. That's just going to be splash screen. And then we have our public main menu screen. And bear with me, I know you guys don't know what that is yet. There's really nothing going on here. Uh, this is pretty much the raw screen that we've made before. I probably won't even use the shape renderer, so you can probably ignore that. Um, as you've seen with our splash screen, I'm using the stretch viewport, V width and V height, and the camera. And uh, everything else, like where I draw which state I am in uh, for the text down in the bottom left corner, is just a kind of change to main menu. So that's really all it is. There, there's nothing new in here, so I, I hope that doesn't s surprise you too much. Um, and there's going to be a stage as uh, we've used or seen before. Um, so we can close that real quick. Um, and so once you got these created, uh, you want to go after everything down here and you just want to initialize them. So loading screen is going to equal new loading screen and that's just going to pass the application reference which we do use in each state. And so splash screen equals new splash screen this and then uh, main menu screen equals new main menu screen this so um, once you've done that uh, down here you don't have to say new loading screen anymore you can just call loading screen and because it's already initialized it'll be sent there to be loaded up and ready to go so uh, you'll be wondering like well what if we haven't loaded our assets and 
if we're initializing these already, don't we do some of that uh, in the creation of, or like when we initialize in our constructor? And that's true. And that's where we're going to start doing a little bit of code migration. And like I said, it's really not going to be much because we haven't taken uh, a lot of steps forward into the actual um, design of the game. So uh, we had a feel for how the splash screen worked and how the loading screen worked and how the loading screen kind of popped into the splash screen. So we're going to start seeing where those show and hide methods are going to shine. And uh, come in here. Uh, when you set a new screen, and now that we have these kind of objects set up, uh, instead of just setting it to a new screen, this screen will actually call its hide method now. Um, so we'll be able to utilize that if we're trying to save the current game state of like if the player's in the middle of something in their game and uh, if they leave real quick we can do some uh, save information to a text file or whatnot so that can be pretty useful uh, along with the resume you can go back into the game load some stuff prior to it and uh, jump right back in and the show method will be called so um, the first thing I believe we need to do is we want to move this dot progress and the queue assets into the show method. And the reason I do that is because when you initialize it, um, all you want to initialize are like the raw objects that don't have any resources that they like need to be able to work. Um, so you're just creating a shape renderer. That's it. It's got a context for that. Now it's able to use it. It's got a reference to the app. We're good. Um, and then anytime it is shown, uh, this dot progress will be set back to zero and it'll queue the assets back up. However, this screen is only going to be used once. So I do feel it's a little unnecessary to be having this code like this, but um, because we're personally choosing to only have it show up once, we, we don't really have to worry about it beyond uh, how we've used it so far. So that's really all we had to change there. Uh, nothing too big. Uh, however, down here, um, now that we have references to these screens, they're public, keep that in mind, uh, we can actually just call app.splashscreen. So that's where you kind of see, like, we're not making new objects each time. We don't have to have the garbage collector collect all these objects that we've just, there are all these screens that we've just kind of forgotten about just by moving into a new screen and whatnot. So we're kind of catching ourselves there and, and that'll be pretty useful for us um, as far as memory management goes or resource management goes. So time to move on to the splash screen. Um, if you remember, we have this uh, input process input processor, uh, setting that to our stage. Because we want that to happen every time we enter a screen that involves a stage that has input that I will be checking for, for click events and whatnot, uh, we'll be wanting to move that to the show method. Uh, that way it gets set every time we re-enter that state. So we're pretty much just going to be taking all this and you can just cut that right out and uh, bring it down here and we're just going to paste it but I mean I'm going to kind of reorder it a little bit so it's a little bit nicer looking. Um, I'm going to be moving this splash image texture to kind of be up here because that's where it needs to be because we have to initialize the texture and then we set the uh, image widget to that texture so it does have some ordering you got to be aware of. Um, so yeah, this, this already is looking nicer. You can see things are being a little more compacted into their respected areas. Um, and uh, let's see, what else did we have left? So I think, yeah, I think that's all we had to do there uh, was just move that texture image down here. So like I said, you remember we, we have to load that splash image before we can use it. So even though we call the splash image right here, um, to initialize it, it won't actually initialize that splash image. So we don't have to be afraid of the assets not having it loaded and whatnot because all it reaches is here until the screen is actually set to the splash screen, which is done here after all the assets have been loaded. So we are kind of setting ourselves up to um, a few hard-coded expectations, which isn't bad in this case uh, because it's how we want our game to work, and uh, if it doesn't, then we just work around it. So 
Um, now that we're setting the input processor in the show method, everything should work every time we enter the splash screen. And that's essentially all we had to do for the migration. Uh, now we can start moving forward. And um, yeah, I, I believe that that really is everything. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the small little cleanup video. Oh, wait, 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 you know what? Actually, the one thing I try to stress all the time, uh, you want to not forget to dispose of those screens. So splash screen dot dispose and uh, main menu screen dot dispose. Okay, so yeah, this is um, always good to do. Now, when our game closes, it'll dispose of those shape renderers and the stages we were using. So uh, everything should be all good to go now. Um, and the field can load a wearable. Yeah. So. Uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this small cleanup video. Um, I know it might be a little mundane at first, but it is a good step in the right direction. So uh, in the next video, we're going to begin talking about replacing that really kind of low quality font with our own font using the free type font generator. And uh, that'll look a little bit nicer instead of that back shadow that's kind of on there. So uh, with that, hope to see you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe as usual. And thanks for watching.